Hello and welcome. In today's video, I wanted to make a sub pen. I was scrolling around on Thingiverse and I found a really cool file for a U-boat. I wanted to imply that it was sinking or it was listing heavily, so I printed it off in such a way. Then I gave it a black coat of primer and started to paint it. For the first coat of paint, I decided to go with a mixture of German gray and medium blue and applied that to the lower portion of the hull. I then added buff to the mixture to post shade some of the blistering on the sides of the hull. With this lighter mixture, I'm just focusing on the center and the raised portions of these panels just to avoid the deeper recesses where the shadows would naturally collect. You can really be as subtle as you want with this technique or you could crank it for that contrast. The effect can and will be toned down a little bit with the rust effects and the grime effects. After post shading the lower hole, I then masked off and used Tamiya Sky Gray for the upper portion of the hole. I also used the same color on the conning tower as well. And then I removed the masking tape. It was at this point that I was starting to feel pretty excited for the project. I knew I was onto something and I thought it would be pretty cool. Even though it was a quick paint job, I'm kind of interested in doing some more models. If you want to see more from in the future, let me know. Then I realized I needed to finish off the deck by giving it a quick dry brush of a dark gray color. I ended up sealing everything in place with a quick clear coat, and then I moved on to weathering it. The first step was doing some rust chipping with some Vallejo acrylics. I wanted the chips to be on the smaller and more controlled side, so I used a paintbrush, and the paint color is called Vallejo Dark Brown. I'm mainly focusing on the raised portions and the leading edges. Then it was time for the enamels. For this, I used streaking rust from AK. I ended up putting this all over the rust that we achieved with the paintbrush and pretty much all of the cracks and crevices. About this time, it's starting to look like a little bit of a horror show, but luckily since it's an enamel paint, we can now come back at it with some mineral spirits to clean up the edges, to add those streaking effects and blend in to our heart's desire. And there we go. Might have went a little too overboard with it, but you know, I'm pretty happy with how it came out. And plus, I was having fun. With the rust effects out of the way, I moved on to doing some of the grime. For that, I used another enamel paint called Slimy Grime Light from MIG. Again, just like with the rust effects, I slathered it on and blended with mineral spirits. Anyone else? Back when they were first getting into this hobby, accidentally used acrylics when you should have been using enamels and then inadvertently ruined a piece. Just me. I mean, I mean, my, my friend, not me. Well, anyway, moving on. I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. Maybe a little overboard here and there. Overall, still pretty happy with it. It's kind of a shame most of this is going to get covered up with some resin, but it is what it is. Happy with where the sub was, I moved on to building the base. For that, I used two pieces of wood glued together. And then on top of said base, I then started to create the sub pen itself. For this, I just used some XPF foam strips to block out the dock or the docking area for the sub. And then I went on to using some foam core to block in each of the sides. And then to further enclose the back. With the foam core now in place, I now have the structure to hot glue some XPS foam that was going to be the entrance to, or the concrete entrance to the sub pen itself. And now with the entrance in place, I backfilled in with some of the plaster rocks to build the rock outcropping that this sub pen entrance was built into. I'm not making any one sub pen in particular, I was just wanting a German U-boat in the Arctic with some snow, so the first place that came to mind was a fjord in Norway. So to capture that, I'm just trying to make a vertical cliff face. 
And then off camera, I assembled the internal structure for the sub pen itself. When I was looking for some kind of reference material to see what was in a sub pen and what wasn't, I came across this photo that had a crane running the upper length and I thought that would be a cool addition. So I printed off some steel reinforcements for the wall so that the crane could ride across. Along with the steel reinforcements, I had also printed off some 10 millimeter doors. I then glued them into these little recesses that I had built into the wall of the sub pen. Once again, off camera, I created this overarching structure for the roof to attach to, and I was realizing at this point I needed to also apply some spackling to give a little extra texture to the wall. After the spackling dried, I then applied some wooden stir sticks to the roof to give it again a little bit more texture. I then glued it on its base and spackled everything and blend it all together. From here, I moved on to some of the lighting effects that I wanted to try out. I knew I wanted to use some red and white LEDs. The problem is the LEDs that I have are too big for this scale, so I wanted to try something a little bit different. I've had a broken optical cable lying around for a while now, so I ended up taking four sections of it and hot shrinking it to the red LED to redirect the light that way. And I was pleasantly surprised with how well it worked. I ended up cutting a hole in the back and pulled through all of the LEDs through that hole. Probably should have wired it the other way around, but hindsight's 2020. Regardless, got it to work, ended up testing them all and gluing them in place. With the LEDs now sorted, I gave it a coat of black primer. And then once the primer was dry, I followed up with a good concrete color deck tan or XF55 from Tamiya. I then made a red rusty color using whole red and flat yellow and applied that to the steel reinforcement beam for the crane. Once I was finished with that, I was starting to believe it was a little too clean. So it was time to bust out all of the oils and enamel paints. I started off with applying burnt umber along the bases and the cracks and crevices and dragging them up to almost a wash and filter like consistency across the entire wall. Off camera, I also used the streaking rust and light grime that I had used earlier, and I also applied some black grime along the beams as well. Definitely went a little crazy with it, but you know, I was in the zone and I hadn't used oils in a while and I wanted to play with it. And from there, I went on to painting the rocks. I ended up doing a version of the leopard spotting technique where I started with a medium-ish gray and then added a lighter version, followed up with a black wash to bring out that detail, and then finally blend it all together with an even lighter wash of the base color. With that dry, I then went with an edge highlight of a even lighter gray and softly dry brush those on. Then I felt it was time to change things up a little bit. So I decided I wanted to scratch build the door to the sub pen from some evergreen styrene sheets. And then for some added texture, I decided to cut some styrene rods into bolts or rivets. The scale was a little too off, but I really liked the way it broke up the panel lines, making them a little bit more interesting to look at. Then I gave it a quick coat of paint, similar in color to the steel beam that I used for the crane on the interior portion of the pen. It's a pretty good color for a rust, so I decided to sponge chip on some darker versions of that Vallejo paint that I was using earlier. But it was at this point I realized I wanted to put a number on the upper right hand corner, so I stopped freehanded that on with some Vallejo buff. With the number out of the way, I continued chipping with that same color. 
I ended up sponge chipping a few extra colors, but ultimately ended up landing on light rust being the last one. Happy with where the surface rust was at, I ended up going back to the oils and giving it a pin wash around all of the nuts and bolts and any of the seam lines. I also did a quick pass with the light grime on the lower portions where the water would naturally be. I ended up painting the crane itself using that same color since it was already in the airbrush. With the airbrushing out of the way, I moved on to painting the bottoms for the ocean portion of it. I wanted to imply that depth. I'm kind of fast forwarding through here because I don't ultimately end up going with the same color. I ended up going over this a couple more times, finally landing on something that I was happy with. I then decided to focus on the top of the build, so I ended up gluing in place some of these rocks and using my classic recipe for the ground texture. I felt the interior needed a little bit more love, so I focused on creating a handrail that would go around the perimeter of the dock. And then from there, I decided to glue in the submarine. Make sure you glue it in the wrong spot first and then have to slide it across. That, that's how you know it's extra good. Then remember to whisper to yourself, that bad boy ain't going nowhere and then it'll be fine. With the sub drying, I decided to start prepping for the resin by creating a dam. And then it was time, the, the moment I was dreading for having all of the flashbacks from my last project with resin flash before my eyes, I knew the moment was nigh. So I whipped up a fairly small batch of Tamiya khaki as the first layer and began to pour. My heart leaped. There was no immediate catastrophe. But soon, more pragmatic thoughts came through, reminding myself that the previous time hadn't failed at the beginning either. So full of trepidation, I went to sleep on this sleepless night. The sun soon rose, I along with it. And it was fine. Absolutely fine. So I ended up repeating it two more times. Luckily, they were just as successful as the ones before them each of which were more transparent than the last. Kind of wish it was a little bit more transparent throughout the whole mixture, but I'll do better on my next resin pour. I'm just happy it didn't fail. While the resin was curing, I also painted the rocks up top, very similar to the way I painted the other ones. And then I gave the ground texture a base coat of white to prepare for the snow effects. I also had these little trees that I wanted to adjust the colors on. They were a little too neon-y, a little too bright. Some of them even had white trunks that I just wasn't happy with. So I ended up just painting them with two colors of green, one darker and one lighter from the top just to make them more uniform. And then with those painted up, I removed the dam and began to work on the snow paste. I started off with some gloss Mod Podge and added a little bit of regular PVA glue to it just to pat it out a little bit. Added some white paint to thin it down a little bit further. And then finally added some Woodland Scenics Soft Flake Snow. This is the first time I've used this snowflake before and it was at this moment I realized that the grain size is actually pretty large. So I don't know how well it works for these kind of smaller scales. After using it here, it kind of makes me want to try AK's version of snow. Their stuff looks pretty promising. Yeah, but enough about that. Top tip though, if you ever want to do snow, make sure you do it in a container that has black paint chips in it. That way it mixes in thoroughly with the pure white of that snow and gives it a lot of just black flake in it. It's really nice to have to deal with that later. I just haphazardly applied it everywhere I thought needed it. I found using a wet popsicle stick to be the best way to do it. I also used what was left to drag across those trees that I had made earlier. And then I focused the trees towards the edge of the diorama. I think it looks pretty good for a last second edition. Speaking of last second editions, I wanted some oil seepage or some hydraulic fluid, some, some kind of fluid to be coming from the U-boat from the opening. So I mixed up some gloss Mod Podge and black paint, thinned it with a little bit of water and applied some streaks. In between the main streaks, I added some Agrax Earthshade just for that brown color. I also went over it with some Nuln Oil as well, and finally a layer of Gloss Mod Podge to bring some of that shine back. And after that, I painted the edges black, and I called it good. So 
there it is. Another one done. Thank you so much for watching. Now, if you like what you saw and you want to watch more, click here to see what YouTube recommends of mine next. Sorry this one took even longer to come out. My computer died the minute I finished this, so I had to wait for computer stuff, but I'm tired of making these excuses. Luckily, I got a really good head start on the next one, so hopefully that should be out far sooner. So again, if you made it this far, thank you so much. You guys are awesome. And to that one guy who watched this whole thing while sitting on the toilet, stand up, respect yourself, get some of the blood flow in them legs. That's not healthy, buddy. I love you, but look after yourself. And those of you who want to stay all the way to the very end, thank you guys so much. You guys are truly amazing. Have a good one. I'll see you next time.